the room with our friends and we're recalling the voice of God Almighty that spoke through the prophet Joel 500 years before and you said, oh, the days are coming when I'll pour out my spirit right here at Treasure. Are you thirsty for it? Are you believing him in Jesus' name? Do you want it? And my sons and daughters, they'll prophesy. There's going to be some sons and daughters prophesy today. And the moon will turn red. How many of you know we're in the latter days right now? It's not business as usual at your house. It's not business as usual in a church house. At your job, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Pour out your spirit, Lord. Pour it out, Lord. Pour out your spirit, Lord, upon us today in Jesus' name. Can you handle it? You see, some of us have been satisfied with a gift. That's like a talent. That's something that we do. I'm no longer satisfied with a gift. I don't want a gift because that's all about me. I want the gifts to die, actually. You see, what happens to in us instead of just having a gift and working in a gift, I want an inheritance. But see, an inheritance comes through a death. Somebody got to die for you to get that inheritance. Jesus died. Now he said, I want you to be crucified with me. You see those people in that upper room? They were crucified. We've been talking about being consecrated and circumcised and crucified. Lord God, right now in Jesus' name. Some of us have operated out of our pain so long that we thought it was okay to sin, to try to make our pain not hurt so much at the time. Lord, we see that now. Lord, we're not victims anymore in Jesus' name. All the people in that upper room, they could sing, claim that they were victims. Jesus is dead. The Jews killed him. Look at what happened. But no, they didn't. They said, I am circumcising my flesh right now in Jesus' name. Before the Ark of the Covenant went and parted the Jordan River, the Spirit of the Lord went. The presence of God went. And then the men sat, waited as they were healed through that circumcision. Lord, I ask you to circumcise us. Now, guys, if you want to be in one accord today, something different's got to happen in your heart. You've got to tell the Lord, I'm not hanging on to any of this death curse anymore. I'm not hanging on to any of my flesh. I'm making, not making excuses for my flesh or for my attitude. I'm forgiving all those around me that have hurt me. Big deal. I'm not listening to my mom if she bad mouths somebody. Forgiving her, forgiven across the world. And I got to look at myself and I got to ask for her forgiveness. And I, I got to repent in Jesus' name. We got to lay everything down if we want to be in one accord. Washed in the blood of the Lamb in Jesus' name. Me and Preston used to pray, Oh Lord, send us the cloud, send us the cloud. But Lord, we didn't understand the process of circumcision that has to happen before that. The process of death that has to happen before that. The, the, the immaturity of me has to come off and has to die in these moments and forever in Jesus' name. The casual approach to the gospel won't bring life, it'll bring death. Lord God, may these things fall off of us today in Jesus' name. May each, like Psalm 139 says, search me, O Lord, and See if there's any evil way in me. And let me surrender it today in this time. And Lord, just as the word said that the sons and daughters will prophesy, yeah, I'm one son, but I'm just one son. We have a daughter here that's going to prophesy to get us started, Miss Vicki, in Jesus' name. Can I escort you up this direction? Last, uh, last week we began to talk about perspective, how we saw things, how we saw life. God began to speak to Ms. Vicki. You share your heart, sister. Mm, hallelujah. hallelujah. You know what I love about the word hallelujah is no matter where at in the world that you stand, when you say hallelujah, it means praise God in any language. So hallelujah. Um, I went 
was preparing to go back up home to Ohio, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania, where I grew up. And uh, the Lord began to, to talk to me about my childhood. Um, I was a preacher's kid, and I don't know if y'all know, preacher's kids can be kind of ornery, and just, just little, just li not all of them, not all. <laughs> just, <laughs> well, anyhow, uh, the church that I grew up in was, uh, was a very fundamental church, and um, I, had, I had a lot of, of issues when I was a teenager, a young teenager. Um, in this church, I was, I was molested. I was raped. Uh, I was called a whore before any of that even happened. I, my pastor told me I was promiscuous, that these things were my fault. I had to go home and look that up. I didn't know what that meant when I was 13 years old. Before I left, I came up to our youth pastor. He was up in the ministry line. And I said, the Lord told me that before I can go deeper, that I have to pray through some of these things, get them out. And I told him what I just told you, and Austin gave me a huge hug. And with great love, began to pray over me, and he told me that I walk with the Lion of Judah. And he said, are you sure you want to go there? And I said, yes, I want to go back. But I'm going back walking with the Lion of Judah. And I want to go back and, and conquer those things because God's made us to be more than a conqueror. And I have found that as we go deeper in the word, he begins to pull these things out of us and, and cleanse us of things from 40 years ago. This has been a 40-year thing that's been deep down inside of me. And I walked out the things that they called me. I began to mule dope. I began to walk where I shouldn't have walked and took a whole different path, a path of rebellion, a path of pharmacia, a path of, of witchery, all of those things that they said that I would do, I did. They spoke them over me and I fulfilled them in, in the world. And I have been saved for a long time and I've been filled with the Holy Spirit for a long time. But still, those things have to come out, and you have to have a perspective. And so I went back into this church that I hadn't been in for 38 years. And I sat there, and I was sitting next to my foster sister. And she reached over, and she grabbed my hand, and she said, it's like I'm sitting next to your mama, you know. And I just began to weep because I could see all of the memories of the places and the that I had sat and the people that had spoken to me and said these things and had done these things to me in my life. And when we got up, I looked back and my youth pastor was sitting behind me. And mind you, it's been 40 years. He's now an elderly man on a walker. And the Lord supernaturally gave me a perspective from when I was 13 and he was a young pastor young minister until today and the Lord showed me as he began to speak and he told me he said you know your father used to come and give me words of wisdom and encouragement and as a young person I never realized that that he would need encouragement and wisdom I just you know he was just this older guy teaching me and I began to see in that perspective from the Alpha and the Omega. And he said, from the beginning and the end, you didn't understand that he was younger than I am now. He needed encouragement. And he didn't understand what he was saying might have a lifelong effect on me. Praise God that he heals me from this. And as I watched him and I saw somebody that had been in this church for 40 plus years and has been faithful in prayer and faithful in the things that he's done, and he's grown too. And the Lord began to show me and heal me. And I just began to, to feel it from the top of my head just flush out of my body. Because of the perspective that the Lord gives us and the perspective that the Lord heals us from. And those things that we can go deeper. We can go into a new place and a new path. We can go. We can be healed. So the things that the, that the Lord uncovers from you, don't, don't be fearful of them. 
but say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I will go. I will be obedient to you, even though it might hurt, even though you are going to carry me through. You are going to give me shalom peace. You are going to walk by me as the Lion of Judah. You are going to stand by my side because you have covered me with the blood of the Almighty. So here I stand today, and I am able to tell you, yes, you can overcome these things. I am more than a conqueror. I'm not just conquered it, but I can tell you, you can conquer it in the name of Jesus. So look for that Holy Ghost perspective that only can come from the supernatural most high and, and walk in it. Get rid of those things that you've held. Don't hold on to them for 40 years. If the Lord shows them to you, give, give them out. Don't hold it anymore. Let it go. Because you are walking crippled when you are walking with these things buried in you. And I, you know, I have forgiven the people that have hurt me and the things that they did to me. I am thankful for my earthly father that covered me. He shielded me from much. I pray for the other women that possibly have been hurt through that. But I ask you today to look in your heart when the Lord calls you and says, let me heal you from this. Let me deliver you from this. Embrace it. Run to it. Run to the king. Run to the holy holies. Don't be afraid. Don't say, he can't do it for me. Because he can. He did it for me. He will do it for you. Because that is our Jesus. That is who we serve. We serve a risen, faithful, loving God. How many of you are willing to say, you know what, I, I need a new perspective in some areas of my life. I've just been kind of going through the motions of Christianity, but today I want to see God change my heart. Now, I'm thinking about, a, I'm thinking about the soil. Uh, some of us got a rock for a heart, you know, and, and all the time that seed, God's pouring it out, but it's just bouncing off of you. It's not penetrating. Today, the, the rock has to be broken, man. That's where the hard work is, to let God break that heart in Jesus' name. The pride, the egotism, the hurt in Jesus' name, the religion. Let it break open today so that that seed can go in. Don't you think that seed was going in that 120 on that Pentecost morning in Jesus' name? It's coming in you. Sister Vicki, I'm going to ask you to pray for us. Pray that perspective. Pray that our hearts would be broken open like that and ready to receive the seed. Father God, Pray I just... Pray for the hurt and that are the, the women. There may be a lot of women that just walked down that road and are held this for so long that the healing is here today. In Jesus' name. Father God, I just, I praise you, Father yes, God, that you are you. our healer, Jehovah Rapha, our healer, Father God. You hear our mind, you hear our spirit, our soul, Father God. And I just, I praise you, Lord. I thank yes, you that we, we can you. come together, that you do know our hurts. You understand, Father God. And I ask if there's women or men, either one, Father God, that have went through these hurts, Father God, that have went through this physical or emotional in, through their childhood, through their teenage years, Father God, just just show them, Father God, give them boldness to come stand before you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you. I thank you that you heal us, that you're not surprised, Father God, but that you have every answer. You have, you have every need already met. You met the woman at the well, Father God. You'll meet us wherever we're at. You complete us, Lord Jesus, and I thank you. I thank you, Father God, as, as that little child in us says, I can't say anything. Nobody will believe me. Nobody knows. They won't understand. But God, you do, and they will. we will understand. And there's no judgment. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. So we just thank you, Father God, that no matter what it is, no matter who, who did it to us, Father God, we can, we can walk forward. We can say, it's okay, Lord. You, you love me. You pulled me up and you said, you are child of the most high. You are the apple of my eye. Even yes. though we've been lonely, even though we haven't felt worthy, Father God, you said, yes, you are. I created you and I knew you before you were even in your mother's womb. So I just call them out today, Father God. I ask you, Lord, just to dive deep, deep in their spirit, deep in them, Father God, and just and just bring that, that yes. shalom peace and yes, that Lord. healing, Father God, from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet 
feet, Father. And I thank you. I thank you that we can walk in forgiveness and that we can walk in agape love, Lord, because that's who you are. And I just, I praise you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We praise you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you, Miss Vicki. We thank you, dear sister. Shalom. 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 Is it okay, treasure, if we go on a journey together? We get to know each other so we know our sons and our daughters and our mamas and our daddies and our friends in Jesus' name. Well, God said that the the sons and the daughters will prophesy. So we've heard from a daughter. Would you like to hear from a son today in Jesus' name? you got a fine son right here. Why don't y'all help him out a little bit? Come on up here where they can see you. Austin, too, is touched by the perspective that he was looking at life through. And God took him in a deeper place. And one thing that I'm really especially proud of him about, so many things, but your, your willingness to examine yourself. To say, this is an unclean part of me. This is a hurting part of me. This is a place that I haven't yet received healing. And you're by no means stuck in a religious place. And so, brother, just as the Lord would tell you, as he would speak to you in Jesus' name. Good morning. Uh, I just want to share a little bit of what happened when I got back from Mexico and what took place in Mexico. And it's got a lot to do uh, with perspective. And it's it's really changed me. It's changed the way I see things. It changed the really the way that I lived. And I just want to share it with you. Um, it's so important, man, that we come in here today. And when I when I hear Alan, like I, I know Alan's got the seed. I know he's got the stuff. I know God's going to bring what he's got. I know God's ready to change every one of us. God's got something to wreck us. Every time I come in here, I know it's coming. But I know there's a Goliath that stands in the way between you and what God wants you every Sunday to have. There's a Goliath that's just walking his ranks, shouting his shout, using fear tactics because he's a fear monger. He's, a, he's a, someone who's just trying to get you so scared that you won't even begin your journey. And I know, I don't, and for every person, it's different. My Goliath is different from yours, but something has stepped in front of the word of God today. Something has stepped to steal your seed today, and it's, it's right in front of your face, whether it's what you're going to do when you leave here, the relationship that you're in. Maybe it's your marriage, your finances, school, work. Something is in your way blocking you that's trying to literally turn your heart into some place that's been walked on a bunch of times. Because, listen, he's going to bring the seed. Alan's going to bring it, I promise. Miss Vicky brought the, the seed, I promise. Her word's good. What she said was biblical. It was on point. And I promise the seed's there, but it's up to us what our heart condition's like. It's not up to Alan. It's not up to, to me. It's not up to anybody else about your heart. It's up to you. Something has come to step on it today to stop you from receiving the seed. Whether that's change of your attitude, whether that's change of your perspective, something inside of you wants to die and you can either hang on to it and remain the same because it's going to suffocate you and kill you or you can receive new seed, new life, new fire, new joy. There's things coming. But my prayer today, whatever it is that you would silence it right now because it's up to you. It ain't my job. It ain't his job. It's up to you. And how bad do you want it? And if you want it bad enough, ask God to stop that Goliath right now and cut off his head. But when we was in Mexico... Man, I, oh, I just I got messed up in a good way. I got messed up in a good way. I'm, I, I'm coming before a service, man. We get to this refugee camp, and there's a bunch of young people there, my age, older, handsome-looking men, uh, beautiful-looking young ladies, uh, moms, dads, uh, little babies. I mean, everything in between. They're not just people that are, that are stuck looking for a free ride. These people want something, have dreams and visions of getting to the U.S., and, and they want to do it the right way, and they got good hearts, and some of these people been through some stuff. And I met this guy, man, his whole family was murdered by the drug cartel. Whole family killed, and he's seeking amnesty because he don't want to be next. And I'm like, man, so what's the process on that? Like, what are you going to do to prove that you need amnesty? And he showed me a video on his phone of his aunt getting her head cut off. And he says, man, this is what I got to show her. You know, and then we go later on that night to have church service there, man. You know, so many times do I come to church, and because I got something going on in my life, I can't even hear God. Because I, we're going through worship, man, and I feel like I'm going through the motions again. 
And here I am with my little first world problems because maybe I got a bill that's coming up or maybe I got something I see in mind and it's not going the way I want it. And I, I got my little first world problem. And here's a guy who got his whole family murdered by a drug cartel. And he's in this building and the building's probably half the size of this. It's hot. Burning up hot. You can't breathe and people are right on top of each other. And man, here's the same guy. His, his whole family's killed, man. And, but yet... He's praising God. He's giving God everything he's got, man. The people that were there don't know what they're going to have tomorrow, don't know where they're going to be. They don't got the help that we got here in the U.S. They can't just count on a soup kitchen and just go live their life and then expect for somebody to bail them out. They don't know what's going to happen next. And, man, I'm, I'm sitting there, and these people are on the edge of their seat. Every word we said, man, they were waiting for it. You can ask Preston, you can ask Alan, I kid you not. You know how exciting it felt to go preach the word of God to people that wanted it? It was so refreshing to me. Because so many times I want to quit. So many times I just want to go in my hole and hide. Because I'm tired of fighting sometimes. I get tired of carrying stuff on my own. I get tired of pulling the, the front of the sled while the other people just watch. And man, it felt refreshing for people that were just hungry. There was something about being there was hunger, man. It made me never want to come back here. And I don't mean that towards you. I'm not pointing my finger towards anybody because I've been the person that's been sitting in pews. But it made me never want to come back, man. It made me really change the way I look. I mean, if they got all that going on in their life and they can push forward and worship and they can push forward when the preacher's bringing it and they can find reason, man, why can't I? It made me value Alan. It made me value Joe. It made me value the worship, the people that are here, Ray and, and Miss Shirley, when they greet you and the people here that greet you and tell you good morning. It made me just begin to value my family. It made me begin to value things like I've never seen it before because how selfish was I? How one dimensional was one dimensional was I? And that's what the word perspective means. The whole point of perspective is is when you see things one dimensional perspective makes it 2D perspective makes it 3D. It lets you get all the angles. All the shapes, all the sizes, and to see things that you can see the width, the height, and the length of the things that God has for you and the things that God does. And it just makes you appreciate people. And so that's just what's been going on in my heart and what God's been doing in my life. And I don't point the finger at anybody, but that's been, I've been the selfish one. I've been the one that needed to be more and needed to be the one on the edge of my seat instead of so suffocated with my own problems and things in my life. And so I just, I just thank you guys for, for hearing my heart today. And, and what God's been doing in my life. And I just thank you. Hang on, hang on. I want you to pray a prayer. See, he's talking about us being fat and happy, isn't he? You know? And just content and just satisfied and cooling out. And I only go so far with the Lord. But he's asking you to be thirsty like the desert sand. Like the, like the cactus plant that's dying because there ain't been a raindrop over there in six months. You see, that's how it was in one accord in the upper room. I, I talk about healing and freedom so much here, but those are really self-interested things. I want my freedom and my healing, you know, and they're, they're very important. But the biggest way that that happens is when we just release ourselves and fall in love with Jesus, then everything else comes under that. And I'm going to ask Austin to pray a prayer that would make us thirsty for the presence of God, for the, for the presence of the Holy Spirit, not just the power, but the broken place that they were in that brought them to desperation for God's presence. And as he prays that prayer, then I want you to, I want you to, I want you to visualize yourself from the perspective of a guy or a woman or Mary Magdalene or Mary the mother of Jesus or Martha, Lazarus' sister, there in the upper room. Maybe the Samaritan woman might have got to get in there. I don't know. And Bartholomew and Thomas the doubter. You're, you're one of those guys right now. You're one of those ladies right now. I want, you to, I, want you to res I want you to hear this prayer. Don't hear it with your head. Hear it with your heart and begin to thirst as those guys did in Jesus' name. Would you pray that, Austin? prayer of thirst Lord we just God we give you whatever's blocking us God 
Lord, we know the seed can't enter a hard place, and it won't, and, you, and it can, and it won't. It won't enter the footpath. God, break our hearts, God. Whether you got to use a relationship, whether you got to use a circumstance, God, whatever it is. Or, God, help us just bring, bring it to you, God, and let us be the clay. Let us be the soil that's torn up, God. But we need that broken heart. Without that heart being broken, God, without us being opened up, God, your seed cannot penetrate us, Lord God. So I pray, Father, today, God, that we would be just hungry to let you do your thing inside of us, God. You say in Matthew, after the scripture of the farmer that scatter and seed, at the very end, Jesus, you said yourself, I, I can't heal them because they won't let me. We don't have the healing because we won't let them, God. We just ask that you would come in this place, Lord God, and we would give you the hurt parts, God. We'd give you our nature that we've clinged to for so long and said, this is who I am. But, God, today your word says that whoever be in Christ Jesus is a new creation, God, that old things pass away and come all things new, Lord God. And we just give you ourselves. Lord God, we give you our minds. We give you our traditions. We give you how we're raised up, God, and we're brought up. God, make us hungry. Lord God, make, let us make you a priority. God, let us put you above our jobs, elevate you above our TV shows, elevate you above our hobbies, Lord God. Let us you be, be, you, uh, be the focus of our conversation. God, help me. God, break my own heart, God. I don't want to point my finger, God, at nobody in here, Lord God. I, I just want to be broken, Lord God, and I pray that we'd be broken together, God, with you and letting you have your way in every one of us, God, and then Treasure Church, God, would be such a light to the people in the dark world, God. Uh, Lord, I, I just thank you, Lord God, and I, I, I just love you, Lord God, and I ask for you to just have your way with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, son. The son will prophesy. What's wrong with you? Are you ready to prophesy? Are you ready to prophesy, daughter? Tina's ready to prophesy too. How about that in Jesus' name? We're going to prophesy. You know what? Sometimes we prophesy death like that youth minister spoke over Vicky. Sometimes we're like David who is being attacked by Saul and we become defensive. And when we see that his, his sword didn't hit us, that his, that his spear didn't hit us, we, we pick it up and we throw it right back. Oh, how childish we are. We can be King Saul or we can be King David saying, God will defend me in every part of my life in Jesus' name. And we can leave childishness behind us. And that was what was going down in the upper room right there in those moments. That was when Peter got up and he said, they're not drunk. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. You're not drunk. It's only 1130 in the morning. You know, a lot of times I contemporize things and put things into where we are, and I, I preach from a perspective that we can hear. But I just want you to hear the Word of God this morning. And I don't want you just to hear it with your head. I want you to live it in your heart. Would you go on this journey with this 120 right now in Jesus' name? And, Lord God, we're not worthy as the 120. But, Lord God, would you pour out your Spirit on us? I fully expect the baptism of the Holy Ghost this morning in so many people in Jesus' name. Yes, I've been baptized in Jesus, but I've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you say. Today is the day that you receive His Spirit in Jesus' name. I fully expect people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I ask the Lord that the tongues of fire, the cloud would rain through here, that the, that the shout of the Holy Ghost... And the wind would howl through here in Jesus' name. Not just in these moments, but in our lives. Because this is what changed the world. From these 120, we're sitting here. It was the day of Pentecost, and Peter standing before the eleven. He raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, I tell you, all who live in Jerusalem, let this be explained to you. Listen closely and pay attention to what I have to say. These people are not drunk. But this is the beginning of what was spoken through Joel the prophet. Joel the prophet said in the last days, somebody say last days. Last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon treasure, upon all mankind. That's you. That's your house. And all your sons and daughters, they'll shall prophesy. Don't be scared to prophesy. God is putting the seed in you now. You've got to let it flow out of you in Jesus' name. Don't just talk about the, the newest CMA awards. Talk about Jesus. Talk about what he's done for you. Talk about life-giving things in Jesus' name. That's prophecy. You don't have to be some big-time preacher to prophesy. Prophesy love. I love you. I want to give you a love hug. I want to prophesy with my love right now in Jesus' name. Sons and daughters will prophesy. And your young men, they'll see visions. The old men will dream dreams. How many of you want that? 
Raise your hand if you want that. I'm going to pray for you right now. Lord God, we're praying together that we will begin to prophesy. Lord God, we're praying together that we'll be consecrated. We consecrate our hearts right now. We change our perspective right now in Jesus' name. We loose it off of us right now. Right now, we loose all the flesh off of us right now in Jesus' name. We circumcise our flesh across the board. Because if we're in there, you're not going to be in there. We ask you to rip it out of us right now in Jesus' name. We lay it down. Lord God, now we ask you to give us the dream and give us the vision so that we would have something to say when we came around our family so that we could pour into them life instead of death in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask you to give people dreams today and that they'll fill up their Facebook with Jesus' dreams and miracles will shoot all across East Texas and beyond in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord God. And I will bring about a wonders in the, si in, in the sky above and signs. We're not chasing signs and wonders. We're chasing Jesus. And he'll bring it about when he decides to bring it about. Some of you need some healing, don't you? Raise your hand if you need some healing. Lord God, we ask you to wash over us with healing, emotional healing and physical healing. We ask you to take us over, all of us in Jesus' name. We trust you. We're not doubting. We're walking fully in faith right now in Jesus' name. And we ask you to physically heal us all across the board. We need your healing and we receive it today in Jesus' name. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious days that the Lord comes. I don't know if you've known all of the cycles of the things that are happening in the universe, but that is happening even now as we speak. And it shall be that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord. Do you want to call on the name of the Lord? It shall be that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, invoking and adoring worship to the Lord Jesus, will be spiritually rescued and saved. Men of Israel, men and women of treasure, listen to these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man accredited and pointed out and attested to you by God with the power to perform miracles and wonders and signs which God worked through him in your very midst, just as yourselves know, this man, when handed over to the Roman authorities according to the predetermined decisions for knowledge of God, you nailed him to the cross. Now listen. He's talking to the Jewish nation right there, isn't he? And the conviction should have been rippling through them, but instead they were defensive. Not me. I didn't do that. Oh, well, it was somebody else. Pilate told me to. The high priest told me to. Caiaphas told me to. Oh, no. But it wasn't just the Jewish nation that crucified Jesus. It was us. His blood is on our hands, too. Because if we were sinless... He wouldn't have needed to go to the cross. So we've got to take our responsibility in that crowd that yelled crucify him too in Jesus' name. And as Peter began to speak these words those years ago, may it be right now that he stood up boldly, not being a man uh, of conformed words or education, and began to speak these words and the Spirit began to fall out. The Spirit began to rip across that congregation in Jesus' name, across that town right there. But God raised him. He raised Jesus out of that tomb, and he brought an end to the agony of death since it was impossible for him to be held in death's power. Somebody say amen. amen. You see, David says it this way, I saw the Lord constantly before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken from my state of security. Therefore, my heart rejoiced and my tongue exalted and exceedingly Lord, I know that our tongues are exceedingly rejoicing in you right now, but is that going to be the case when we get in our car and go home? And it's kind of hot in our car. How hot was it in that upper room as they toiled right there time after time, thirsty for you? Moreover, my flesh also will live in hope, and that hope will encamp inside us. For you will not forsake me. Oh, God, you're not forsaken treasure. Not a single person here. You're not abandoning our souls to Hades. Nor let the Holy One undergo decay. You have made known to me the ways of life. Do you know the way of life, treasure? He's making it known to you right now. He's showing you very clearly the way of life and death. You've been living, some of you have been living in the death way. Even death curses, even death thoughts. Today he's showing you life. And you will 
fulfill me, infusing my soul with joy in your presence. Brothers and sisters, I, I confidently and freely say to you regarding the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us today. And so being a prophet and knowing fully that God had sworn to him with an oath that he would seat one of his descendants on that throne. Guess what his name was? His name was Jesus. The Lord, the Father, said to my Lord, the Son, sit at the right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of treasure, let all the house of Israel recognize beyond all doubt that God made him both Lord and Christ Messiah, anointed this Jesus who you crucified. And Lord God, let the conviction fall upon us. And even as those 120 men and women who had been starving themselves, who had been thirsting for the Lord Jesus, were laying their lives down asking the Lord God, oh, please don't abandon us. He said he would come back. And so we're standing here. We're sitting here in faith. We're not thinking about anything else. Come, Lord Jesus. They were also hearing this, that they were part of the crucifixion, that they were part of the death. Would you hear that? Because until there's repentance in this house, until there's death of every part of our flesh in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord God, can we really ask him to come? Can we really ask him to fill us with his Holy Spirit when we're filled with our spirit? When there's egotism in the house and pride in the house and say, I operate in this gift. No, I want the inheritance. I want the inheritance to come through the death of everything that is me in Jesus' name. I believe we see this in David over and over. Now, when they'd heard this, they were cut to the heart. Lord God, cut us to the heart with remorse and anxiety. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what are we to do? And Peter said to them, Repent! And I say to you today, Repent in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm not going to go down there to that front of that church. Everybody will think I'm a sinner. We already know you're a sinner, by the way. You're not holding out on me, baby. And let me be the first one down there to tell you I'm the sinner. Change your old way of thinking and turn from your sinful ways. Accept and follow Jesus and the Messiah and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ because of the forgiveness of this sin. And you will receive the gift. Guess what the gift is? It's not a little red Corvette. The gift of the Holy Spirit. You're wondering why you're living a powerless life and you're joyous, joyless in your life and you can't overcome sin and over and over you have this because you're holding on to your own spirit instead of receiving the Holy Spirit. But the wind is here today. The thunder is here today as his spirit falls upon us in Jesus' name. For the promise of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we're praying this now. Joe, would you get by those keyboards and I'd like all of our prayer team to come to the middle like a bunch of people in the middle and the and the and the back and I need some some cats down here at the front too in Jesus name Bobby and Bobby would you come and play with pray with us today in Jesus name Jeremy that came with Bobby and Bobby would you come and pray with us today in Jesus name for the promise of the Holy Spirit is for you treasure and for your children Lane do you have that picture that I uh that I kept that I wasn't paying attention to when you put it up there. That picture from Jesus Burger. Can you flip that up there one more time? For the promise of the Holy Spirit is for you and your children and for all who are far away, including the Gentiles, as many as the Lord God calls unto himself. You see, we've got four generations right here, don't we? We got four generations of sisters right here that have come to the cross. This is your children and your children's children and your children's children's children. Exactly as scripture says in Isaiah 59. So at the shade tree, Christina's daughter got baptized yesterday. Amen. She got baptized in the water, but we pray she gets baptized in the spirit real soon in Jesus' name. Let's get on our feet. I'm going to finish this thing. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're not finished with any of us. This is not the time to leave. This is the time to press, 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 press into your daddy right now in Jesus' name. 
For the promise of the Holy Spirit is for you, treasure, and for your children and your children's children and all who are far away. That includes me. As many as the Lord our God calls to himself. And Peter solemnly testified, continuing to admonish and to urge them. And I am urging you with more words to say, be saved this crooked and unjust generation, Lord God. In Jesus' name, we can't save ourselves. Religion cannot save us. But you can save us. And you can't just save us. You can fill us with power. So we don't have to live beat down in somebody else's old identity of us. We don't have to live as Vicky was prophesied over all of that time. We can live new in Jesus' name. But it's going to take a death of you. And today is a day of death so that we can have life.